Wait. Wait. I have to push what? play. Oh, push play. Yeah, of course. Are you recording? I have something. I have something to start off with. What? Let's say your name first. Oh. Here we go. <gasps> uh, I'm, I'm Damien Kindler. I'm Amanda Chapman. And I'm, I'm Martin Wood. I'm trying to turn it down. Uh, I'm trying to turn it down so it's not so loud so they can hear us while we're talking. I have something if we run out of things to say. So just okay, all right. touch my foot with your foot. We're out. We're out. What? We're out of things to say. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I was lying in bed last night thinking, you know... Oh, do we want to know this? I was lying in bed last night. What do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> I was lying in bed last night thinking, what are interesting uh, new factuaries that we could come up with? Because everyone was sort of... Everyone maybe, jumped on the factuaries, loved it. Loved the factuary. And I went, oh, here's a factuary. Oh I thought I made this one up. Um, if you want to make a disturbing face, there's a technical technique. Pretty intense moment we're watching here, and you're talking yeah. about... Oh. Okay, anyway, go yeah, ahead. We have well, other stuff. You talk over it. You know, well, yeah. Yeah, okay. That was intense. Ooh, good establishing. We already talked about Martin Woody Yell Cut. What? <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. Uh, All right, so um, th this is uh, eulogy. <laughs> this, is this is eulogy. This is my disturbing okay, face go ahead. right now. Go ahead. If you want to make a disturbing face, okay, uh, make your eyes go as wide as they can, which will make your eyebrows go up. Make your eyes go as wide again. Then, if you can, drop your eyebrows and frown your that's eyes. Keep so your bad. eyes wide open, but, but furrow your brow. That's kind of a look that you have in your face whenever we get a notes call from sci-fi. I said it was a disturbing, <laughs> disturbing face. <laughs> What's, I, no, I didn't. I said it's the most disturbing face you can make. Okay, ready. Here, uh, we okay. try it, ready? Here you go, Amanda okay. Tappen. Oh, We're doing visuals for you right now. You should see this. It's amazing. Hey, this is an incredible shot. You should see this, if you can, on green screen. It's, it's up all over the place right now. We put this one up. Uh, Anthem put it up. Because this is really cool. It is just a green set with a bunch of boxes, and it looks like a ship. And uh, not even all those boxes there. Just not a even of all those there. boxes. You're right. So that rusty ship with the blue uh, pillar thing—that's all. Uh, is effect. They're all well. They're all composite pictures, right? Mm -hmm. They're pictures that that uh, were taken and then piled one on top of each other. So it's really a 2D picture mm -hmm. that that uh, we use to do this kind of stuff. Instead of focus. making a yeah, instead of doing a whole three-dimensional. Or as um, the French say, the fuck us. Oh. Why'd you have to go there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, French, French is funny. Well, the French. French. Hello, France. Nan, okay. Nan, 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 so nan, I'm, nan, I'm just explaining. Nan. This is a factual. Voici le abnormal. Okay, so we had to fill this thing with abnormals, and we tried to figure out which would be the easiest abnormals. And we call him Stickman. There he is. Stickman. Stick That's terrifying. Stickman. <laughs> You'll see him again. Uh, Jason, here's Jason Schomburg. Jason Schomburg. The funniest guy. He, Brooklyn kicked him out, and he's forced to live in Fort Langley, British Columbia. Yeah. He is that tall, actually. So He runs between your legs. So you know what you do to get this? You just you, you, you take a picture of his head, and he's acting, and then you just yeah. he's like put six, him into a he's 3D He's like six feet right tall, now. and he, you know, he basically wears a, a, a bald hat, a bald uh, cap. Bald cap. We made him wear the entire green And he wears a green one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, you're missing the socks, Jason. <laughs> you made those green socks. I know they're slippery. We just made him wear the whole thing. Yeah, Jason, all day. you got to wear the whole suit. And yeah. it'd be better if you got in character by keeping it on all day and wear it to the mall. You know what? Nobody ever has to wear a green suit. We just make people do it oh, because we're a green so show. At last day of shooting, season one, remember you wore a full green suit? I it did. It was super hot, and, I, and you, yeah. you lost a bet because you're like, okay, how... You have to keep this on. I wore a green suit the entire day on the last day of shooting. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. Well, you I had did. it on underneath the clothes. At lunch, it was gone. You were wearing this. Well, because I was wearing the hood, too, and I had direct all day. Oh. Sounds like you're a liar. Oh, we, we've got to do a commercial. <laughs> commercial break. Hey, we're back from a commercial. We're back Welcome from a back. commercial. I hope you bought every product and the things you saw. Okay, now, Damien, you didn't write this. Uh, Sarah, B, Sarah B. Cooper, the lovely right. Sarah B. Cooper, uh, wrote this week, we knew we needed a story that really wrapped up the amazing events of parts one and two in a very human story. And uh, Sarah uh, took that dubious and wonderful hard task on herself as her first script she wrote for Sanctuary. Yeah. And she did a lovely job. She's a wonderful, very humanistic. She, her office is adorned with, you know, patchouli and, you know, I Native Indian artifacts and, um, you know, severed heads and things like that. And she's a lovely... We, we made her lose the severed head. Yeah. No, it was the patchouli that I okay. insisted had to go. Severed heads, no problem. There's Chuck. Yeah. So she did a great job. I'm really happy with, with this episode. It's one of my That's favorite Chuck, scenes here. Our stand-in. He's he's the stand-in for Ryan and for uh, for Robin. Yeah. And he's also two-faced Chuck. Chuck and blank. Yes, Chuck and blank. Something that rhymes with Chuck. You um, can't say on television. You can't say on television. So um, Ooh, we're a podcast. We can say it. This, no, you can't. You're not allowed to. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the only the only real creature in here is Robin Dunn. No, that thing with a hand. 
that was uh, one of our uh, our uh, uh, special effects makeup people. Uh, that that was me vomiting. I wasn't well that one. They said just get in the box and on cue. You went. We well, needed vomit. And a little chunder. The fake stuff didn't look good. So uh, we end up doing this. Uh, and so, uh, yes, we've got uh, one of our, our special effects uh, makeup guys with a big long arm on. And the entire day he walked around with that arm and uh, we made him eat with it as well. Uh, factory. Uh, factory. It's actually his arm. Okay, uh, I predict one more podcast we're, until we're completely sick of the word factuary. No, we, no. no we're going to go the whole season. No, but you know what? We just don't, we, we can't overuse it. Okay. That'll right. be the problem. That wasn't an actual factuary. I made that factuary. No, as a matter of fact, it was a I was thinking non factuary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I made up the word factuary. Uh, uh, the factories of life. Non factuary. The factories of life. No? Doesn't work. <laughs> I, you know what I just made oh, up? I just made go. up a fictionary. Oh, you oh. you in the face. Look, there's a book that's got that word in it. The, the, no, there what's, the word, what's the book called? The Martin Wood story is not a book. Yeah, fictionary. Uh, so it's here's a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> so Brent, it's, Brent it's Spencer, a color brochure. Brent Spencer did a did a great job in this episode. He's a wonderful director, and he, um, you know, he made he, 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 this this quarters. We said make them messy, and it was great because usually these quarters are very you know put together and lovely and charming. And it's nice to sort of have them look all mucked up and gross and full of horrible food and. And I think uh, our set deck people um, were, were a little nervous to sort of really go for it. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't like messing. They don't like messing. They don't like messing. Martin Walkie's like more pizza, more crap, more food. Like I want yeah. rats to be, uh, you know, in here. Yeah, more rats. But we didn't get the rats. Um, Half eaten, take out rats. Uh, this is the same room we use as our guest quarters. You'll recognize this room from uh, the room that we put uh, Christine Chatelain. Uh, Christine in when she came. Um, well, that's an exciting factory. Not no, no, the factory is, it's also the same room we use for Henry's bedroom, but we just changed it to set that room. Well, uh, so oh, I should have apologized for the earlier scene. No, it was the same, it was the same yeah. If you go back, you can't, you're same watching the last television. No. Oh, well. Could be the same walls, but it's not the same room. But if you no, go back, in the previous scene with the puking monster, right? yeah. Henry and Will are not wearing, wearing the same there. jacket. Oh, that's right. It, it looks like they're there. wearing the same jacket. I, Who? What's that? In the previous puking scene... It looks like Will and Henry are wearing the same jacket. They're not. They actually, the lighting just kind of made them look more or less the same green. But Henry's was brown, Will, you know, Will's was more green. It just, on the day when I saw the data, I went, wow, it sure looks like. Let's just say that factories have to be interesting, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we just, you know what? Can we just say that? <laughs> Let's say that. Let's, I, okay, can you sign, it, sign this? Oh, this truck. Because you, that means you are not talking for the rest of this uh, podcast. Right so now. this truck was so, uh, um, Ricky. Stinky. Oh, stinky. I loved it. And uh, it was such a mess. There you now you know what the date is. Yes. Um, that we actually couldn't drive it in the studio because we would have choked out the entire crew. Yeah. So we had people pushing it. Pushing so it, cool. yeah. And that was all just a green set, of course. Here, there's there's little zonalite things, that, which is an insulation, um, uh, flying, sort of going through the, the, uh, the scene to make it look like there's a... Uh, okay, okay, let's here's talk about, about this one. No, this is a great factory. This is a good factory. Now, one of the things that you know Chris does is he likes to hit people as a way to sort of... Now, he really cranked... That is a real crank. The, he, that's not the cut. That's, that's not the cut. When, no. when, when, when Brenton yelled cut, Robin's eyes were watering. He literally turned around and kind of charged Chris and said, what was that? Because Robin's thing is, you can hit me as hard as you want, just tell me you're going to do it. And Chris really didn't say, look, I'm going to wank you in the back of the head like that. And he did. Chris never tells Chris me. Never did. And we all went out for beers that night, and Robin was still angry. He was still like, he'd be yeah. sitting over his beer, staring across the table at Chris like it was going to be a show. Well, because, because Chris <laughs> made him cry. That was why. Chris I think made him cry in front of the crew. Yeah, Chris yeah. made him cry. It was more of an honor <laughs> thing than anything. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now there's a blood feud. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's something weird about the one actor saying, I had a lovely day at work, and it's such a pleasure sharing, you know, this amazing time with you, and the other going, I shall have vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shall have vengeance on your soul. Yeah. You just said your death word. And passed the salt. Those nachos were dry. Okay. This is the interesting episode for, for Will and Magnus, yeah. because it's the first time that he actually gets up into her face and says, yeah. I challenge you. And it's very much the first time where the tragedy that they've both gone through, or are going through, uh, you know, really brings them together. You get to almost see them coming together closer as friends uh, in real time in this episode. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it really is. A, it's one of those, those episodes. It's funny because it's it's so contrasted with all the other stuff that's going on with the, these creatures and things like that. Whoa, Whoa. Whoa. what happened Whoa. there? Whoa. It's, Whoa. Our, our DVD's pausing, our so DVD's we can't pausing. tell you. We can talk through this anyway, because oh, we know exactly right. what's happening. Mm -hmm. Did your oh. DVD pause too? That would be like a really that weird really factual way. Yeah. We can make your DVD pause. So, um, but yeah, the, the contrast of uh, what's going on with, with Magnus and, and Will and what's happening in the rest of the sanctuary, 
is when I read the script, actually bothered me because I just thought it, we're not doing justice to uh, to the, the the big story, which is the eulogy. Um, and well, which uh, is the Where's Ashley story? That's the big right. story. This is the and I think cool when film. when when this first came together, when the, this this show first came together in an edit suite, we realized there was so much more of the B story, which is this story here. Um, that we actually had to, because it's visually more exciting than, than what's going on. It's also... But the a, meat of this thing is really the, the... Yeah, this is more the the one-off standalone episode of Sanctuary where there's something born and it, right. and it gets away and you got to chase it down and bring it back, right? But, you know, this stuff was... was it was a tough it was a tough episode because you had to make sure that this story, you know... Didn't tramp on the other one. But, yeah, there's that, but also didn't... Um, was, was shootable, like it, you know, wasn't too too crazy. And then this, but the, the emotional sweet spot of hitting this stuff right and keeping the audience engaged in literally a two-hander, a drawing room mm -hmm. two-hander yeah. uh, about a theory. About a theory in a computer. And this is, you know, it was yeah, theory in a computer and theories that mutate. And I, I, I really think you guys did a, a wonderful yeah. job. And this this story sets the tone for season two. Yeah, it really does. And one of the things that I think, I'm going to close your ears for a second, but the, the interesting thing about uh, Amanda in this one is that, that uh, uh, knowing where you had just come from with the last two episodes and uh, how we had to start this one, it's really, it's an interesting uh, acting moment to try and take uh, where you had been bring it to this point and then be able to get to where you need to at the end. I just, I really like that journey for, for Magnus in this and I really, I thought, you know, watching you as an actor in that, because it was the beginning of the season because you yeah. had all that energy. Well, w um, when, when we finished parts one and two, you were exhausted, you'd given yeah. everything. And then we had to say, and now, could you now, please episode do three. an Ebsen play? Yeah. yeah. It was not. Yeah. It was I, I like, that, I like the way it's written for Magnus right here because uh, what she has to do is not sound crazy. And sound she has to sound completely perfectly. plausible as a scientist. Yeah, and not be the uh, well, because Will would call her on it way sooner if that yeah. was the case. And I think that, that what ends up happening in this one is that that um, you have to believe her. Well, it's more than that, though. It's I think what it is is it's that uh, putting extra you know facets on Magnus, where we've always seen her so either in control or angry about that, but never in here. And a couple of times in this season. We we really see Magnus out of control. Yeah, okay. and that's interesting. No, well, this is important to uh, this episode for for, uh, for awesome. Adam. Yeah. Uh, it's a further introduction to the Kate character. Mm -hmm. It's really the, the the you know we introduce Kate and is kind of the kind of the, the the dirty mercenary in the first two, and then and she does play a role in the, in the climax of part two. But really, episodes three and four, the next one, are really definitive about setting up why the heck she's there. And these are, by the way, wonderful visit effects for... Uh, they are, this is a three-dimensional creature, and it, it's just so... I love the, this, because we, we put Anthem in a really peculiar position. We said, it has to be cute and deadly. We're back! Hey, we're back. So, yeah, cute, uh, cute, so cute and deadly. Cute and deadly, deadly is what we were talking about. Um, but deadly. <laughs> when you have a, when you have a three-dimensional creature... It's either one or the other. You've heard that saying. Your creature is either going to be cute or deadly, but not both. And we force him into the position. Well, because both. it has to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has to change. Okay. Factuary. They did not have something to look at, and therefore their eye lines are not right. They're both looking at different places all the way through. But this. they tried, like cause the, the, they because uh, the creature, the Nakahe, flits around. They tried to, in the course of the scene, go, okay, then we'll look here, then we'll look up here, then we'll look here, then we'll look what here. What does mean again? Not Nappy. a pixie, not a pixie, or a human. Or a human. Anyway. Not a pixie. I call them Brooklyn. Fred. Human or... Elf. Elf. Yeah. Yes, that's right. But it's really, I just call them Brooklyn Fred. So, um... Which is not fun. Uh, with that, uh, with, when you do this, we, normally we would not put... Not a pixie uh, or human either. Yeah. Yeah, not a pixie or human either. We normally we'd have like a little green ball they'd follow or something like that. In this case, they just sort of tried to find it. And uh, Lee Wilson, when they asked, where do we look, said, uh, well, wherever you look is where he's going to be. I like how carefully it's the comic book. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> normally, uh, when there's one person, it's easy. When there's two people, it's harder. 
By the way, Ryan Robbins is terrific in this episode. Yeah. He really kind of just holds down the fort of the A story or B story here. And, and, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, again, my problem kind of falls in the fact that we've just lost Ashley, and th this story doesn't allow us to feel that. To feel that, yeah. yeah. Oh, but we've had this discussion where the A story is just completely in ensconced in that. Like, you know, someone's got to be doing the business of sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, her line about, uh, you know, uh, um, Kate's line about, well, you know, and then the, the, the bosses had to shoot the boss's uh, kid. <laughs> See, that, look at this, look how, how cool it is. It really holds up in, in a close-up. It's kind of disgusting. But he's supposed to be cute. Disgusting is cute. <laughs> 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 So that's Hero. Yeah. He's a lovely actor. Hero kind of talent. Now, this scene, we had to tear it apart because it was originally a much bigger scene and yeah. you could tell what they were doing. And right now, you have no idea what they're doing. They're pounding stakes into the ground and doing this, but there's never a, you never get to see it. It sort of doesn't matter. You know they're doing something that's affiliated with Magnus's you know, theory and mission. Right. So this is the Like a bioscanning unit analysis of area. What yeah, else do you need to know? but why are they outside and what are they doing? Because she's setting up a perimeter around the sanctuary. So what I'm saying is that we know that because we read the script and saw the original scene. I think people understand. They will now. We yeah. just cleared it up. If you're confused, oh, you don't think the they'll understand podcast that you put stakes in the ground or anything like that. Well, why? Why didn't you show it? Why did you change the act? Why? Why, why did I do it? What, what is your problem? Can because I, I, I wanted to have <laughs> something to talk about in the podcast. Can I? Yeah. Have a, did we do a podcast for episode two? Yes. yes. Was I there? Yes. Yes. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's how you make a really weird, uh, remarkably peculiar face. This is a great This is scene. a good scene. I really this like this. This is a scary scene. You know, I complimented you on this and you didn't like the compliment. You can't choose to not like a compliment. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, okay, could you come up with a better compliment or a different yeah, compliment? I didn't like, I didn't that, like compliment. that compliment. Try again. <laughs> Next compliment, please. Please me more. And then you put your fingers <laughs> in your Please me ears. differently. Now look, he's, he's bloody. He's yes. Bloody. He was much bloodier than this. What did you say to me that I didn't like? Um, the, the, when, when you and Chris get into a scene like this, and Chris is huge and big and for this, and you really contain it. I think you're more powerful in this than Chris is. I think well, Magnus is more powerful than Druid. Let's say that. I don't mean you're more powerful than Chris. I think that, that Magnus is more powerful than, than Druid. Because he gets on top of her. Like the scenery this. around you yeah. hasn't been gnawed on. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't think the Druid's chewing the scenery, but he gets to it. Watch this. This is the part where I'm talking about. Is that Magnus becomes really contained here. Whereas in the presence of that kind of malice, anyone would shrink away. Yeah, you really believe that you understand how the dynamic works. Mm -hmm. See, that, that response. He's huge, you, and you're like a sonic laser right through the middle of it. I really love that it's part of It's a great dynamic, though, between the two characters. Yes. Well, it, 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 gives, it, it gives, uh, you know, we believe that they have the history that they have because she doesn't shy away from them. This is a, actually, for just these few scenes they have, there's some wonderful uh, John and Helen stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he's yeah. got all the emotion in this. You know? Yeah, he's, he's indulging in it all. He's talking about the fact that he just walked around and killed 50 people. And, and how the central brain trust has been undone. Right. And then Magnus goes back into this. I, I love that dynamic. This is great. I, I love this. It doesn't play out the way I think it, it should. In a virtual set, it doesn't play out as well as, well as it would in a, in a real set. We did have a lot of wind and sand. Yeah. Yeah. And this reveal works. That was That's cool. It was a yeah. cool costume you wore, too. It was a yeah. Look. It was hobbled together, really. That jacket was a woman who was making some, some of the costume, and she, it was her own personal jacket, and I loved it, and asked if we could borrow it. <laughs> Never that, that's back. a factory. <laughs> it's a factory. That's a factory. And then, you know, there was the word to watch Nietzsche. Watch Nietzsche. Which uh, I think Sarah made up. Did she? Or something like that. Well, I no one could say it. that it was real. No one it's like Z-Watt Nail. Z-Watt Nail. Yeah. Oh. This was another one of these or scenes. Or Camp Kamana Oh, you ah. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> oh, laughter. Sorry, you're overruled. Get it? Oh. 
And she just looked at me like I didn't get it. And my look back to her was this horrible, disgusting face where I kept my eyes wide and lowered my eyebrows. <laughs> oh. The most disturbing face ever. Eyes wide, brow furrowed. <laughs> How do you do it again? I love that shirt. It's shock, then anger. <laughs> okay, so people who've had Botox could mark. not make this face. No, it's Because their eyebrows would not but what if, what It's the talent. You ask them to make the face, and exactly. they can't do it. See, this is a problem for a director always, is if somebody goes to shock too soon, they have nowhere else to go, because shock is like the most shock wide you can get. Camp shock it off. <laughs> you oh. can go to all Why are we stuck shock? on camp names? I don't know. <laughs> Ashley? No. Really? Oh, this oh. is crazy. Too bad. <laughs> what? Oh, Too bad she's, she's not there. She's hotter. Yeah. 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 And smells way better. Yeah. Uh, like by a thousand percent. <laughs> you are a thousand percent better smelling than him. Uh, what if she did? I, I'd like to see. Stay, it's a funny I'd like thing to interrupt this podcast by saying that I have a university degree. <laughs> <laughs> I like to interrupt this podcast by saying outside the window there, Viz Effect. Yes. Viz Effect yeah. of a city. You know, I'd like to say this factory, <laughs> this fictionary. Oh. Will is not actually in this scene. Shut up. So here he goes. Can you be fired from? Can you be fired from a podcast? podcast? I'm, getting I'm, getting really, you, I'm getting all these reactions from both <laughs> Amanda and Damien, where it's like, out of the you pod. are not allowed because I pod. got the first joke. I, I, I said the first joke out. Then this is a really important scene. Important you guys are. Scene. You know, Magnus sort of it takes a beating from. Don't that. laugh through this scene. <laughs> Amanda, it's, it's sort of like oh my god, people are really emotional about it's this. Like, we're sitting it's like when laughing. Leslie Nielsen and, and Priscilla Presley walked out of that movie laughing, and you pan up and it's his platoon in <laughs> <laughs> uh, Naked Gun. And watch this visual effect. This, this, whoa! whoa! That's a new look at that uh, thing. At our foyer. I just I love to see more and more of the sanctuary. So it's it's I mean there it's outstanding how far you can go. Rob Berger. Rob Berger. Well, in town, eat it proper. <laughs> okay. Let's all go to the lobby. I think it's a copyright song. Probably. Can't do that. You can't sing Happy Birthday. Either. Amanda Tapping? Yes. <laughs> being sued for singing Let's All Go to the Lobby. <laughs> State versus Tapping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm getting nervous already. Okay, so obviously there was nothing there when he had to just snare zero. Oh, Candy Yeah. Um, we, we need to talk more than, than look, I think. Yeah, yeah, we so. do. Sorry, it is a podcast. Shh, shh. We're watching. Yeah. <laughs> You've already seen this show, so we'll tell you more interesting oh. things about it. Oh, he oh, got this, it. This, this, work. this, this didn't work that well. Work. It's like, oh, come on, Bigfoot's bigger than that. But he was working with nothing. Well, I think it's the, like I said to you before, it was the reaction is, no. Oh. Instead of, hey, I gotta get that guy. Hey, what do you know? Hey, what do you know? <laughs> He's a stenopoly, have <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Nobody knows who that character is anymore. <gasps> who? Watto. So, of course they do. <laughs> Whenever we have a, hey, what do you know? A Jedi. Whenever we talked about a snitch in the street, it was always Watto. Whenever we did that's, the right. <laughs> that's right. I don't know much, but people are talking. <laughs> <laughs> that or a hell cell. Commercial break. Oh, commercial break. Yeah. Hey, we're back. back. Damien Kindler is being sued for singing Little Spanish Flea. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin Wood for singing Bohemian Rhapsody, the bo birthday song. Galileo. <clears throat> okay, who is that guy? Me in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> that was Damien. That was Damien. That I guy. just need to get to the washroom. <laughs> That's actually yeah, me now. I can't find my office. <laughs> yeah. Crap. No, so this is, this is parked right outside our studio. This is outside the studio doors. In fact, it's right outside where Vera's Burgers are that they're about to go to. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. That was the challenge, is to get them outside on a hunt through the city, but not really but go not out actually be able city. to <laughs> go to the city. <laughs> Stay in the Interesting yeah. factoid. Uh, factory. Uh, factory. Right. Uh, Agam had to drink three of these. Yeah. And uh, uh, she, she learned her lesson. She was hot on She <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> <made her> <laughs> oh man! What? No, I want to know if she actually made that sound. She can't. She she's yeah. so laid back that her hopped yeah. up on goofballs is like you, you know, waking up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Alarm goes off. <laughs> <laughs> and back to the interesting kinetic tension of this. 
Well, you need, you know, you need both storylines in order to keep yeah. viewers. Um, so, <laughs> oh, um, wow. So, Watching, sure. All right. So, here's where. What? No, we yeah. have viewers. We have viewers like. Oh, well, we well I was worried about this being boring, so I said, "Why don't we have the heating break in the office so they have to do the, all these scenes naked?" And people kind of reacted. You didn't to that. think that the writing held up in this? I thought it held up really well. Mm. You didn't think the acting held up, Damien? What do you think? Yeah. I, I, what do you say? I think the, the writing was there. I think that there was just there needed to be more. More than this. More or less clothing. This is really good. Less clothing. <laughs> more or less clothing. I, yeah, I find less. that no clothing Fewer gets in the way clothes. of acting. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Isn't it just better to be naked? This wardrobe is chafing. Exactly. It's getting in the way of my performance. I think my character would be <laughs> naked. <laughs> you guys have done porn for way too long. <laughs> Just Foley. Oh, yeah. Just a Foley yeah. artist for We're porn. so old, we can only do porn, porn from the neck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just faces going, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can say, oh, yeah, on a podcast. Oh, yeah. Damien Killer's being sued for saying, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so the, the van was parked right right there. Yeah. And this is the back of our... Uh, this that, that guy through that door his, takes you into stage one where yeah. a green screen That is. cop took yeah. his job to be sued. He did. He's an actual real cop. <laughs> he came out... Thought there was a, a, a break in. That's the fictionary. In. I like that guy's house just small enough to make him an old city cop. <laughs> well, the old oh, cucumbers and mushrooms. The old cucumbers and mushrooms. Down go the pickles. <laughs> okay, serious, so yeah. this scene took down longer. To this, this scene. <laughs> pickles are down and it is Pickle bad. Pickles down. This, this scene took longer to. To set deck, than it did to shoot. Making those little feet took like an hour. Well, an hour. it was hard to find the right creature to go walk in there. Yeah, we had right. to go through like the entire lab of the sanctuary to find it. Okay, why is he so proud of putting this sandwich down? Made it myself. myself. Because he made it's it himself. His first sandwich. It's a sandwich. It's his first. It's not sandwich. even cooking. Can you make a sandwich? Can you make a sandwich that looks that good? Yep. I just boil up the lettuce. No. Nope. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. I don't know you. I defy you. We're doing cooking videos for season three, by the way. Yeah, me. exactly. If we do a season three. If they're making fun of the fact actually, that I actually... Actually, season three could just be cooking videos. They're making fun of the <laughs> fact, that, they're making fun of the fact that I burn water when I, uh, when I cook. He yeah. does. I can burn water. He takes the pot, puts it in the sink, because it won't fill up, and you realize it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, can I sing? Karaoke. Oh, no. Karaoke. No. Oh. Okay, name one thing I am good at, then. Wearing shorts. You wear shorts well. You're wearing long pants today. <laughs> oh. wow. You're wearing jeans well, too, actually, Mark. Wow. I'm really proud of you because it's something you can, that you, you need to know is that it, just in the last, what, two, maybe three years, you've actually started wearing long pants, like a big boy. You know why? Because I have fewer pairs of shorts, and when they're all dirty, I have to wear long pants. Oh. You wow. can the people the opposite. You can um, okay. You, you can skin those a looks moose. of disgust. You can you skin a moose. Disgust, not disgust. You can skin a moose slightly better than Amanda. Slightly better than me. Okay. Oh, Ooh, skull, skull. Who's skull? Who's mm. Mm. Were you wondering at how it looked so bad? Commercial break. <laughs> hey, we're back. we're back. We're back from commercials. Uh, Did you go out and cook yourself a sandwich during that commercial break? I boiled myself some bread. <laughs> <laughs> what? What accent was that? I just that? got a visual on the boiled bread. That was Belgian. <laughs> okay, I like this scene. This is yeah, really this well is done. Cool. Notice, right up at the top, there's shoes. There's, there's a pair of running shoes hanging on that wire up there. Yeah. Because it's a very Vancouver thing to do. But they're not moving. So well, your shoes what's the theory there? there? That, that when you see shoes hanging over a wire, that's the place to get your drugs, right? That's the theory. Yeah, I had no idea. That I just threw my friends so much. I threw so many of my friends. There's wires. nothing but shoes out in front of the studio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. I just throw people's apparently, shoes over whenever no, I see a pair. Of shoes. Okay, guys, we're gonna start a drug point. operation. Well, we need, we need a good cover. Okay, let's shoot a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We no, know. that's. The, I we need know. some shoes. Maybe yeah. somebody told me that, and I believed it, and I'm an idiot. But every time I see a pair of shoes, I look around for shady-looking characters. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Wow, what if it's like in the guys middle of an intersection, which is where I usually think. Guys with trench coats and toothpicks? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you looking at, C? C? Well, I don't know, I'm looking like... for some drugs! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we, but we digress. Oh. I only had one pair, and I'm barefoot! <laughs> Where's my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> we used to make jokes like, that actor in the most hey, romantic... 
Look, will you marry me? I love you. Anyhow, and back to the story. Tag up skull. Yeah. So we realize at this point that it's not Ashley. It's her finger bone, but not her arm. Wow. Teleporting does crazy things to you. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> I think he's just saying stuff so he'll get the look. I don't have anything else. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. That w that look kind of wilts me. Oh. Mm. Okay. A little flower. This is yeah. a cool okay. Set. This is very cool. Tiny set. cool. Uh, this is um, our production designer, Bridget McGuire, said, okay, you want a sewer? I'll give you a sewer. And she gave us the sewer. But then Anthem took that sewer and made it like seven times as long. So in the big long shots, it's all uh, all Anthem doing their craziness. The only thing that was built, and I know because I actually approved this giant overage in the budget, <clears throat> is they built a T. They built one long hallway and two, you know, a corner you can turn right or left. To be able to do this. Then they went, then that's where they went north. And Brenton and Gord just shot it in three different angles and Anthem extendoed it. Yeah. Brendan Spencer and Gord Verhul. Yeah. Director. Okay, so this, director is, yeah, this is where you get the, the very cool Stena Habilis. No. And nothing's a danger cool, than, uh, than blue. Blue is like alien blue. Yeah. yeah. When, when, the, uh, when you see the Steno for the first time, this is one of those, those things that people, I, I said to you, Amanda, that they're going to use it on their, uh, on their desktops. It's one of those really cool, scary this shots. Was the, this is all this affected behind here. This is just a yeah. truck on a green screen. Yeah. It's neat to be able to do this. This gives you looks that you don't see in most TV shows. Because we can't go there. Right. But it looks cool. But the funny thing is, viewers sometimes say, you know, it doesn't look real. Well, yeah, it's not. So, to make it look real, you, you understand, people, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, that it takes, we usually have like two weeks to make these things. So, uh, whereas a movie takes a year, uh, we're cranking these visual effects out, we being the artists at Anthem Visual Effects, are cranking these effects out sometimes in a couple of weeks. I see a shot a week before you do, sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we all do. I mean, we're, Actuary. Yeah, Actuary. It it's true. I mean, I think if, I, if people are like, oh, the effects look like crap. They don't look like crap. They just... For a television they don't, show. They're not going to look like it's Avatar. For a television show. We also are going for a graphic novel look. We don't, yeah. it's, sometimes it's not photo real. It's not meant to be. Yeah. Why are we so defensive? Where's the A for effort? It's not like there's anyone yeah. feeding us. Just love here. us. Just love us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why are you so cruel? <laughs> it wasn't me. It was Martin. That's what I have to say about it. The writing was good. See yeah, the see? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the writing, see? Yeah, the writing, see? The shoes. <laughs> the, shoe, the shoe's shoe. on the wire. Shoe on a wire. Like maybe things suit. Oh, so this, is this is an important moment. This is good. Very important yeah. moment when we'll... Yeah. Magnus! Magnus! See? <laughs> All he said, how do you want to do this? I said, you Michael... Can't make it. He you said, can't make how do you want to... How, how should I do this? I said, Michael Douglas. Yeah. Magnus. No, it, it, it's... Magnus. It's... It's... Uh, Michael Douglas from Wall Street. Mm. Yeah. Green is Green. good. Green is good. Yeah. Beautiful. Same Both of you did a great job. It sounds like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Everything you do sounds like Jack Nicholson. Why Even don't you shut your face and be another factuator? <laughs> <laughs> I sound like the guy from part one. There's nine more of these to be remained. Oh, yeah, Doug. <laughs> there, look at that. Yeah. Extendo Whoa, sewer. Extendo. Extendo. Extendo for the steno. And the classic drip, drip, drip onto the gun. Which is, oh. what's he dripping? It's not. It's no, it's drip. not. Okay, oh. cool, but oh. not as cool as his next shot. Oh, oh. oh. good timing on the singing there. We're back. I'm looking at the time. Oh, here it comes. Gun down. Gun ah. down. Hoop earrings askew. Ah. ah. Now, look at that. Oh, look at that. I love the way he moves. I love the way he moves. Because he's got this, he's got this... No, not in love. You are. You Why don't you and the Steno go to the Fina for the weekend? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? yeah. Why don't the Steno and I go to the weekend? Production uh, office got the bill. Wick and Inish. <laughs> weekend at the Wick and Inish. Why did you and a Martin giant and creature Steno. go away to a luxury resort? I wanted him to romp on Long Beach. I wanted somewhere where we wouldn't be. People's <laughs> We wouldn't stand <laughs> out. <laughs> where we wouldn't stand out. Arr. Now, okay, I why does Henry, Henry shoot? So, 
Yeah, shouldn't have been. We in fixed yet. it. We fixed it. We did. The, the sound effect really works with it. Pudding. 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 Warning shot out country. Yeah. I love the fact that, that it's like a sewer and it's slippery and it's yeah. like it, I don't know, I think they did a good job. Yeah, they did. Ah, oh, yes, down in the nest of love. And it's I like how, how Agam's lips here. Yeah, tried, yeah. exactly, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Like, that kind of stuff is... This is funny. Yeah. This is funny. I actually suggested this one. Where are we? Uh, your room? Yeah. How uh, how does how did he get the jeans down there? Uh, it took me. But when? When he was a little guy? Yep. So I love that shot. That's one of my favorite creature shots. Just when had. you wondered how the hell it did that and you didn't see, you just go to this. But look how he walks. <laughs> like he looks like he could be upright. He's right. down. I really love this demo more than ever before. Ryan's terrific. More than you should. This no, more not more than you should. Oh come on, man. come on. Human. It'll never last. Lick, lick, lick. They're great. They're just totally selling. There's yeah. nothing there. They were just, yeah. There was no, no, no one actually jumped in them. I offered to. <laughs> you mean I'll tell you, I'll lick you. If well, you because want. in order to lick, in order to look like it's licking, there, it should be some residue left on their faces. I offered that too. Yeah, yeah. that's what Damon <laughs> was. Damon is going to be good residue. at that. I'll leave goop, whatever you want. But somehow women yeah, women kind of actually get a little if, if Damien did it, it'd be called I'll residue. Leave residue, residue <laughs> you know? If Damien does it, if Damien does it, it's going to be called the residue. <laughs> residue. Yeah. Oh, this oh, guy is wonderful. This guy's Paul, amazing. Paul, what's his name? Yeah, and you I feel I really so like, uh, like spiritual, right? Yeah. Like he just he's so cool. But and then he sits back afterwards. And, <clears> and you sit in your cast chairs in between setups yeah. and shoot the breeze, and he's totally cool. He's an amazing guy. Yeah. But the whole crew sort of mellowed yeah. around him and um, and around the woman. Like yeah. it was her daughter like, came. It was nice. Yeah, her, her daughter, daughter came to visit, yeah. which is cool. Because she didn't live she's from far, far away. Far, far away land. Um, yeah, it was cool. There's a fact behind. There's literally just some yeah. sand on the floor of a green screen set. And a, and a real fire. We changed that um, from she wants you to have this to we want you to. Mr. and Mrs. to watch Yeah. Exactly. He wanted something that was very open-ended, but it didn't have to be utterly defined. It was just a, a journey that reminded her of closure and, right. you know, and then this happens. You know what's interesting to me is, is that we get to use Magnus the same age all the way through history like this. You know, I'll say something mm -hmm. else that we haven't said. Robin is wonderful in these scenes. He, he has he a is. beautiful sensitivity, and you believe in his loyalty to her and, and the honesty of his emotions that he knows Robin understands that Will needs to be honest with his emotions with Magnus, otherwise she will not trust him. Exactly. And, and he can't get, he, he, there, there's no power that he's going to have that is going to be stronger than hers, so yeah. he comes at it a different way. Yeah, and you know, a lot of the relationship between you and Robin comes out of this. You guys yeah, really yeah. trust each other, you really yeah. respect I, I think that's a huge part of it, is the, is the safety net that the two of us have for each other. Yeah, he's, he doesn't bullshit you. He's no. really quite, mm -hmm. you know, just put honest with you, Larry. You're the only one. He lies to the entire world. He lies to the world, yeah. Except but not to me. Yeah. And he still doesn't talk about that other thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it. It's at a, yeah. It's a fibtuary. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got to stop. We just can't stop. Tuary at the end of every word. I'd like a snack tuary soon. I'm really quite hungry. Oh, what's a hungry? We're almost done the poduary. <laughs> oh. um, there are commentuaries. We uh, commentuaries. Commentuaries. <laughs> Pod commentuaries. We'll call them commentuaries from now on. Oh. Oh, see. Kind of, we're blowing you the wad, is all I'm saying. You just did it. What? Ah, see? <laughs> see? Oh, wow, see? Ridiculous. Blowing she? the wad -o. What? <gasps> what? You oh. blew the wad -o. Here you go. Here's the tusks. Here's the tusks. Keep them. I don't need them. I like the cut to Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot's like, oh, man, she took the tusks. And he's like, you know. You oh, he took oh, the tusks. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this is my mom's tusks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and now cut to Bigfoot. <laughs> Smiling. Uh, uh, uh. 
Mm. You bite your hand. I can't wait to see the action. <laughs> oh, we wow. chomped at the same we time. We chomped at the same Double time. Double chomp. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Okay, here comes the big scene. Now, we've all seen this scene about 175 million times because we were trying to find music for it. Yeah. Um, you are watching uh, an American broadcast of this where uh, a lovely song called Human, Human. Is, 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 is brought in. But for the rest of the world... The DVD, you will hear a different song. You'll hear an original score by the amazing Andrew Lockington. So it's, wo- it's actually wonderful. It's nice so it's to have It's kind of cool. We have two different yeah. versions. Yeah. yeah. They're, both, yeah. they're both terrific. And during the uh, the mix, with the sound mix for this, we, we sat and listened to this and thought, wow, that works great. We put Andrews on, and it just made all of us cry. Um, and uh, That wasn't allowed. That was... That was... Phew, that was why we That's said that. One more cry. We said, we don't think the American public's ready for this! Until the DVDs come out. So we're going to... We, we are, uh, are aware that we're going to get a lot of comments about this show and yeah. this episode and what we're doing. Why did uh, we do it? Why did we do it? There's a lot of variables at play here. And look, look at, at that dancing set. Around. Look at that set. It's a stunning set. It's, yeah. It was a choice to take the show in a deeper direction. It was a choice to play against expectations. And it, I think one of the ways you can understand why we did it is if you think about what the alternative was, which was to have everything kind of just come back to normal, that's less believable and doesn't it doesn't draw you into the characters as much as this choice. And yeah. we all agreed, everybody, the networks, everyone agreed that this was the smart, brave, kind of... Uh, Scary way to go. But, but more, true to the show and the characters of the show to do it this way. Right. And it was hard. Amelia was an incredible trooper. And yeah, incredible. Amelia was outstanding in doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's sci-fi, so nobody really dies in sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, cool. We've already figured out a good story. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm convinced yeah. we'll do for season three if there is one. Yeah. This, uh, the, the interesting thing here is that, that Amelia went three entire shows without saying anything but one word. And then she has this beautiful scene uh, with Magnus. And, that's, uh, uh, that's a backdrop of Paris. That's there. a backdrop of oh, Paris. Yeah. I think I've eaten in that cafe. <laughs> you ate in 2D cafe? The Mon. The Mon. Um, Beautiful. I mean, and you know, you want to be respectful of the characters. And when I think Magnus, we've said this before, oh, man. the characters have to suffer. Yeah. yeah, they do. Because when characters suffer, you and yield. Is there anything Apparently else? The that actors have to suffer too. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything more powerful than this? <clears throat> to to? So this scene took a long time to yeah. shoot because there's a lot of different setups, and you know, we'd all been crying for a good portion of the day. Look at puppy my eyes. It was very hard. I couldn't stay to the end because I had to go to a school function for my kids, and it was really hard to leave. This was a really hard scene. Yeah. This was really hard. This was outstanding, both of you just... Amelia and I had... Uh, it was really beautiful, actually. Yeah. But as an actor, but for the two of us to have. It was a really amazing connection. And you you invented the end. Oh, yeah, own. I changed the line of the end. Yeah. And then said, should I clear this with anyone? I went, no. I mean, Executive I producer. Me. I own me. It's very important that... Oh, we'll just add this at the end. Just. It's so, that's so powerful. We, we've ended three shows in a row with Magnus just on the floor. You know? And we held on to the shot until we did the look down. Now, this is important. Nora O'Brien... Ah, oh, Nora. Nora Bryan was one of the most wonderful people we'd ever worked with. She was an executive at NBC and formerly at Sci-Fi. She worked with all of us on Stargate. One of the nicest people. And she we died, actually, died yeah. very suddenly um, about six, seven months ago. Unexpectedly. Yeah. And she, she actually, we, we uh, Martin and I were showing her the uh, original webisodes on his iPhone at Comic-Con. At Comic-Con. In the green room at Comic-Con one year, and she was so supportive. Yes. Yeah, so so we, Great it was a no-brainer to dedicate Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you next time. We won't actually. Next time, (laughs) Chuary.